Global ecological problems require measures which are urgent but which will only bring results in the long term. Until these results materialize, local initiatives are managing to maintain species and ecosystems with direct, one-off measures that allow time for the more important global measures to take effect. The African elephants are a good example. While fighting for a total ban on the ivory trade, which would bring an end to poaching, while corridors are being created between parks in order to permit the movement of the herds, and while local populations are educated and involved in the care of the pachyderms, an enterprising woman is managing to recover the orphans of poaching. skirts of Nairobi in Kenya, the Daphne Sheldrake Animal Orphanage takes in the little pachyderms that have lost their families. Elephants have a very complex social life, so the little ones need a great deal of care to replace that given by their mothers. Here in the orphanage they receive just that, but the result of this project goes beyond the recovery of these little elephant calves. In the orphanage, which is open to the public, people can gain some idea of the fascinating life of elephants, discovering their complex social structure, and through this knowledge, understand the senseless brutality of shooting them. Orphanage also takes in other colossal orphans. Both species of African rhinoceroses are threatened. Their horns, mistakenly believed to be aphrodisiacs, have made them the prime target of the poachers. As in the case of the elephants, every year this poaching leaves behind orphans. And like them, the little rhinoceroses also receive shelter and care in Daphne's orphanage. In this way, the seeds of a new awareness are sown. Each visitor that comes to the orphanage learns to love the orphans of Sheldrick. And elephants and rhinoceroses win friends in their desperate fight for survival. Friends on whom their future will depend. Some species, however, find it much more difficult to gain the sympathy of man. The wolf has been part of our nightmares since we were children. We have been taught to fear them, to avoid them, to hate them. For centuries we have persecuted them as an enemy, mercilessly hunting them down. Perhaps at some point in the distant past, we were their prey. Then we became the hunter. And now we are finally trying to learn to live alongside them, sharing and respecting our respective roles as super predators. Yellowstone National Park was created in order to avoid the extinction of the American buffalo. It was the first national park in history and is now the pioneer in the reintroduction of the wolf. When the park was created in 1872, there were still gray wolves in Yellowstone. But in a farming region like this, the wolves were enemies and were hunted down until none remained. A century later, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service decided to repair the damage and capture some individuals in Canada 
in order to bring them to Montana. And with the help of his former enemy, the wolf returned to Yellowstone. After years of preparation in 1995, 14 individuals were brought from British Columbia and the next year another 17. There were many obstacles to be overcome, but the greatest one was ensuring the wolves did not leave the park and enter the cattle ranches in the surrounding area. Too much effort had been put into convincing the people of the region, and they weren't going to spoil all that by trying to go too fast now. So the wolves were released progressively, after having remained in captivity in enclosures inside the park, and after having placed radio collars on them in order to be able to track them at all times. The experiment was a success and has benefited the ecosystem as a whole. Today over 120 wolves live in Yellowstone, exercising their role as a super predator. All the species in the park have been affected and as was foreseen for the better. Populations of herbivores such as the North American elks, moose, pronghorns and buffaloes are now much healthier. The plant communities have improved as the excessive pressure of the herbivores has progressively diminished and large predators like the grizzly bear have increased in number as they can feed on the prey caught by the wolves. The entire park appears to be healthier each year more and more approaching its natural ecological equilibrium. What once seemed impossible has now become a reality. Man has put back what he had previously taken from the park, its great hunter, the top of the food pyramid. And today, once more, the shadow of the wolf can be felt in Yellowstone. <laughs>